Olá, pessoal! Tudo bem? Bom, eu tô aqui pra dar meu recadinho. É, como sempre, eu gosto de falar que o Cambly completa a gente e a gente completa o Cambly. E é muito engraçado porque eu acabei de receber um e-mail de uma das nossas alunas do Sound School que me deixou muito feliz, muito feliz mesmo, porque para vocês pode parecer que a gente está fazendo só mais uma propaganda, sabe? Ah, eles estão ganhando para isso, então eles têm que fazer propaganda. Não, na verdade não, é porque a gente realmente acredita no melhor e na no que, que a gente pode fazer para melhorar a vida dos nossos alunos. E essa aluna especificamente, ela está fazendo o nosso Sound School, ela se inscreveu um tempo atrás, quando a gente abriu, e também se inscreveu no Cambly. E aí ela mandou o seguinte recado. Eu estou fazendo aulas com alguns professores no Cambly e essa semana um deles me disse que meu sotaque brasileiro está quase imperceptível e foi com um professor com mais de 10 anos de experiência. Fiquei tão feliz. Queria compartilhar com vocês isso e agradecer porque o curso de vocês contribuiu e está contribuindo muito. Então é isso, gente. Juntar a Sound School, juntar aqui o Inglês no Icru junto com o Cambly. E a gente poder dar para vocês uma experiência de graça, ter uma aula lá na plataforma do Cambly, colocando o nosso código o Inglês no Icru Podcast. Vale muito a pena e realmente faz as pessoas mudarem, mudarem completamente o inglês e ficarem cada vez melhor na língua inglesa. Só lembrando duas coisinhas rápidas. Uma é que existem professores 24 horas por dia. E a segunda é, independente do seu nível, você pode fazer o Cambly, tá bom? Então vá lá no Cambly.com ou no aplicativo do Cambly. Cambly se escreve C-A-M de Maria, B de bola, L-Y. E o nosso código é inglês no Cru Podcast. Now, on with the show! Hello, hello, hey guys, and welcome to another Ask Me Anything session. This is the part of Sound School where you ask questions, we try to give answers, and I'm here with Alexia. Hey. How are you doing, Alexia? I'm fine. Sunny day again. I'm happy. Again. Awesome. <laughs> If you're happy, I am happy. So today we have a really good question, and this question comes from our student, Ana Carolina. Ana? Yes. You said Ana. 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 Yeah, I believe she goes by Carol. <laughs> so, Carol asks, what are the most common connectors used in English conversations? For example, in Portuguese, porém, no entanto, além disso. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, what do you think about this question? I love it because connectors are always very useful for us. Yes. So, when you hear the word connector... Do you have an idea of what that is? Literally, that is connecting one part of the sentence to the other. Right, right. Yeah, I just wanted to clarify a bit for the question because I think we have two similar ideas that can be a little bit confusing. So we have the ideas of filler words that I would consider things like, like, um, So, things that you say when you really need a moment to think and you're not saying anything significant, but it's really just giving you a chance to think, right? But can filler words be connectors? Yes. Or vice versa? Yes, yes. Yeah, there is a little bit of overlap with connectors and filler words, but I think it's important to make the difference. So, if we are talking about connectors, this is in general what i would refer to in linguistics as conjunctive adverbs okay but they are things that are linking two situations so you could be contrasting you could be continuing a situation completing completing changing yeah it's these are really useful not only to sound more natural in conversation but it's also an easy way to kind of level up your English instead of saying like, so all of these filler words that we use all of, all of the time, if you say something like additionally, furthermore, however, mm -hmm. those things help. Yeah, of course. Cool. So she specifically asked about the examples porém, no entanto, and além disso. Do you have translations for these? 
translations. How would you translate boarding? But. Yeah, I think that's what I would say as well. I think the formal translation would probably be however. Yes. However, most of the time we say but. <laughs> so, Alexia, can you give me an example using boarding in Portuguese? Yeah, boarding for me is a little bit more formal. I would use mais, for example. Mais. <laughs> I said it in a Paulista way of saying because if I say mais, mm -hmm. it will be plus as well. But, but okay, of course, people who are listening to us are Brazilian, so they can understand. So, porém, for me, would be more formal. But a simple example would be o jantar de ontem estava ótimo, porém a carne estava um pouco seca. <laughs> yeah, so, but you're just adding a little nuance to your mm -hmm. original statement. Yeah, so but and however in most cases can be used more or less synonymously. So you could say, I really enjoyed the movie last night, but I think it was a little overrated. Mm -hmm. Or you could say, I really liked the movie last night. However, I think it was a little bit long. Yeah, I think that but would be mas and however would be porém. Yeah, perhaps. Yeah, I think that's a good way to think about it. Okay, what about no entanto? Is that different than porém? It depends on the way that you're using it. I would say that no entanto as well is a little bit more formal. So, like, no entanto estava esperando uma resposta sua e não obtive. Yeah. So, yeah, I think it's very similar to porting. So, a lot of these connector words, Carol was specifically asking about in conversation. So, things like, however, nevertheless, these are really things that we would say in more formal speech, or it's an easy way to improve your writing pretty quickly. Uh, for sure. That's, I only see me using these words, even in Portuguese or in English, when I'm writing. And when I'm writing it formally. Yeah, I agree. I think the last example, though, além disso, that's a more common one in Portuguese. Yeah. Ah, eu tô me sentindo bem hoje. É, mas além disso, eu poderia ter dormido melhor. Sei lá, uma coisa assim. Yeah. I don't know. I just <laughs> made an example from the top of my head. I didn't have time to think about it. Yeah. So I think we could have a lot of different translations for this. You could say in addition mm -hmm. or additionally. You could say furthermore, mm -hmm. which is a little bit more formal. I think the least formal version of this would simply be also or and. Also is a word that I use a lot. Yeah. Very, very common word. Yeah. Yeah. So you could say, for example, I practice yoga once a week. And I try to eat healthy. That makes sense, right? Because I'm saying, yeah, I do yoga. And I'm also trying to be healthy. You are kind of continuing or complementing the original statement. But you could also say, I practice yoga once a week. Additionally, I eat healthy. Or in addition, or furthermore, or how, or not however. <laughs> um, moreover, I eat healthy. Things like that. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Cool. So this world of connectors and linking words and conjunctive adverbs, all of these things that sound really complicated, they can be super useful. And honestly, I need to do a little bit more preparation, but at some point soon, I would love to do like an entire week of podcasts just talking about these because I think it's super important. I think those are super important, but also like you don't have to know by heart, you just have to put in your speech naturally. And the only way that you do it is like practicing and trying the filler words and trying the connectors and like see what works for you better and what it doesn't. Because it depends a lot if you are a more formal person on your day, like work day mm -hmm. or not. So it's really good. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with most of that. I think some of these you need to know by heart, but yeah, I agree with the sentiment. Okay. Cool. 
So I hope that at least begins to answer your question, Carol. And we really appreciate it. Yes. Thank you, Carol. Thank you. We'll talk to you soon. Bye. Muito obrigada por ter escutado mais um episódio aqui do nosso Inglês de Necro Rádio. Como sempre, vou pedir para você deixar sua review, deixar o seu e-mail no nosso site inglêsdenecro.com, ficar de olho nas novidades que a gente sempre manda, nossos recursos grátis, enfim, todas as novidades que a gente puder, a gente vai estar compartilhando com vocês, principalmente por e-mail. Então, é isso. Eu quis aqui dar esse recado. Como sempre, obrigada pelo suporte e a gente se vê no próximo episódio, tá bom? Bye!